welcome to another video. In today's video, it's a property tour. Let's get it going. I put a lot of work in on, this is a garden here. But eventually, this ditch here, will be, this will be taken out, but this system of pallet fencing will be all the way around this whole section here. There's a little exit driveway over there that frames that side. So what I have left to do as far as earthwork in here is concerned, I'm going to dig a trench in here and I'm going to test my um, fruit tree theory. Put some fruit trees in here and dig this has to be dug out again to put the fence. It's, I dug it so long ago that the, it's pretty much filled in a bunch of space, especially where the prairie dogs, they pretty much just completely trash the ditch. So this will be completely freaking animal proof by putting the, plot, uh, the pallets and then the screen that I use over there, whatever it's called, little protective screen, will actually go down into the ground with that. So it'll be a pallet, it'll be on grade. Back, dun, 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 probably two to two wide. And then all the way down to the, the hard layer will be that screen. And then up at a certain point, there'll be probably. I don't know, the narrowest band of sheet metal I can get because the critters will climb that stuff. They, they've climbed up and climbed around on that stuff a number of times. So to keep them completely out of here, I've got to put that band where they can't climb over. So this is my climbing plant slash bug house so I have a little bit more work to do on it to finish like all the bug stuff drilling a bunch of holes in here um, is basically all I have left and planting the climbing plants but I'm not really gonna do planting out here until I have it completely surrounded so this is all gray water this is all mulch. This is my new composting system here. Over here, I've got a couple compost. I have a composting accident and a composting experiment. So I had this IBC tank full of garbage in an anaerobic state for years. And what I was gonna do is I was gonna stack it up here water into it and start using that water to fertilize this area right well in the stacking process it fell over and broke and smashed and dumped and I was using these compostable bags that I thought were compostable you can see them poking out every once in a while right that little thing right there so this area was just gnarly so I just covered it with mulch and this pile here, I had a little composting station in that field where I'd put all my composting stuff. Didn't really do much. So I took that entire pile and buried it right there. Now I'm doing it this way. So I just picked this area here. This is four different ones here. The concept is to get worms. Once I dig this trench along the back for the trees, they'll be uh, deep enough topsoil for worms to survive. Right now, I don't think worms can survive because the topsoil is only like a foot and a half deep and it's mostly comprised of like ash, sand, and just weird non topsoily ant benefit, excuse me. Um, worm beneficial stuff so I got this coffee everything scraps I dig a hole I put it in there 
then when I get this finished and I'm ready to start, you know, really kicking this thing in, I just come back to this area, drop some worms, connect this area to the deep part with some more of these. And the ants can go through here, go through there, find the deep parts, five winter, come back up. So that's the concept. All right. And yes, I leave the labels on there. Because it's either that or burn them or put them in a, in a bigger landfill. So we'll see how this works. I put the compost on top because there's microorganisms in the compost that's going to go down into the soil and start feeding off all that stuff. And this is now living soil. You can see that pile of junipers right there. That's most of the junipers that were left over there. I had a few out and about over here. And this front strip here it is technically the road. But when you have neighbors that build their fence on the road, basically, whoever built that fence on that property there, so this is where my property is. I had an official guy come out and do it. And now all the way over to here is where they put their fence. So technically, this is all road. But because their fence is there, it's kind of pointless to you know make all that road. What's the point, right? So I'm gonna dig in a trench, probably right about. Here. So this trench here is for the animal proof fence that goes around the entire property. There's a trench all the way around the property, except for this side here. This side over here, um, there's a fence there with animals. So basically to do that side, I have to kind of do it all at once. I gotta like make an agreement with them and then pull their fence out and replace it with the fence that I want to put in there and well I'm not there yet so but aside from that side not being dug it's all dug around that'll be an animal proof fence similar to this one this one will be like a little micro one then there'll be one going around the entire property so then about here all the way there's a there's an exit place over there, so it'll stop. So it'll be a little bit little strip here, little strip on the other side, and a strip here. And that will be where I put bamboo and tons of yarrow to freaking nitrogen fix for the bamboo. I'm gonna dig a trench. I don't know how. There's just not enough topsoil, I don't think, to do it well. And, you know, amend the soil and this whole thing so the bamboo has a really good shot at it. And basically, the biggest point of that is just this road, right, is, well, there's really only these people, but these people are here. But, you know, during the summer when people are driving on that road, it creates dust. And if there's a big, nice hedge of bamboo, I'd filter out the dust things on the property a little better. After years of mental debate and just thinking about it and calculating it and, and just like tons of just thinking about how this structure should really be, right? Because right now I've got, you know, a lot of stuff there that has to come out that's pointless to be there in the structure. Like all that metal siding, the insulation, and most likely, most of the roofing 
like all the roofing. So what I decided to do now is make this an A-frame with a garage, right? So over here, putting in a garage pad that, and a door that's big enough to fit maybe, maybe not. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. That would be ideal to have a garage door that was high enough to put the back on it. But it might not be possible. So in the A-frame, actually I came up with a little better way of doing this. Like that solar array and everything it's hanging on goes away. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna actually dig out this pretty decent chunk put and and deep right and put in a nice big section of insulate the foam pink foam to break the, this and then put in a a wall that goes all the way here it's probably pretty high, like two or three feet high, or you know, like a decent amount. And that is what the roof, the A-frame sits on, and then there'll be one over there too. So basically right here, A-frame. Now, the ideal is getting out at the 45 degrees, because the plan is to put the solar on the side. Now, what makes this even cooler is that shipping container becomes the tower for the wind turbines and for three different solar arrays, the east, the west, and the, the winter array, right? So this is my winter array, and then I got another summer array up here, and then I got the May array up there, right? All those go away. This is gonna be one A-frame that goes up like this, completely covered in solar panels. Now, at the peak of the A-frame will be the shipping container. So it gets stood up on its end, boom, and that'll be at the one end, the further side of this A-frame structure, right? So then, the actual ridge beam for the A-frame can actually attach to this, which will just make the whole structure so freaking awesome and strong. And just, you know, from an engineering standpoint, it's just gonna be a really stable longevity structure, right? And then the roofing on here, the reason I decided to go with an A-frame was there's so many problems with roofs leaking. So if you build an A-frame roof and you don't do any penetrations out of the roof, like some vents you run horizontally and then out like one side or the other, you're cutting your potential for filtration and by a ton so and this and this whole structure isn't really intended it's what I call livable but not intended for living right the house goes here and that actually I've evolved over the years as well a lot of information on earth ships and the problems they have and so I was like you know use the principles I didn't like the amount of plumbing, indoors, in, within the place, complicated technical plumbing to do all this filtration work, right? Which I'm doing with the sewage treatment plant that's right there. It's like, it's not exactly the same thing like them, but I mean, the end result is you're processing your own waste on site and utilizing the affluent to do stuff with it, right? So I really didn't like putting this 
sewage treatment plant in the place so that, you know, I mean, it works great for people, but I didn't want to do that. So I was going to separate the greenhouse from the house. Now, honestly, I don't know if I'll ever build the house, right? Like <laughs> getting this done and probably selling is probably what I'm going to do, right? But if, you know, some weird thing happens and I ended up do building the house, I'm now <laughs> back around where you buckle a greenhouse onto the side of the house and then the way you arrange your heating and cooling and the connection of those two, you can literally heat your house with the greenhouse and just do super awesome things, right? So that's kind of evolved to that point. Whether I get to that or not, nah, probably not, but maybe. Just got done plucking junipers. I haven't actually finished fixing all the holes and everything over there. It just got a little too dry. You can see where I drug all the junipers from over there, over there, and over there. And there was a little patch here as well, and a couple over here. I drug them all out there and piled them there. That is actually going to be the bio agro, agro char. Some people call it biochar, agricultural charcoal. I'm gonna dig a pit over there and turn all that into agricultural charcoal and spread it over the entirety of this field. Now, if you look here, this is like the oldest field that I restored. That's the first thing I did. So I have burned some of the out of this over the years but it has now been five years since it got cleared I believe and then another three years since it had a big major like it had that big pile in the middle and I spread that around about three years ago so this field in its entirety is kind of a square this entire field in its entirety like next as soon as I can start burning again in the next after after summer now you can kind of even see how there's a little more beige over there where the rest all is kind of a little more definitely tell a, a normal grass from drought tolerant grasses. Drought tolerant grasses don't really put off a lot. There's not a lot to eat, right? Like if the animal ate that at this time, the seeds and stuff would probably be super nutritious. This has got good stuff in it. But like, 
this little wispy stuff right here and there's not a lot to it it's good that it's here and you see this one here this is why it needs to get burned every once in a while because i think that that dead looking like that is some sort of like disease or fungus or rot or something that, that stunts the plants stunts the grass and i think the only thing that gets rid of it is it being burned every three to five years and that takes care of that so you can see the stuff that's like that would be providing like a lot of fodder but it's just kind of not going off this year too much because there's not as much rain over in this field might be a density issue but you're gonna go over the other side and look at the clumps over there pretty good. I ran over a little bit with the backhoe, but I mean, this is healthy stuff. There's a lot of food there. Okay, the mixture of this stuff is different because I didn't plant anything. It just kind of, this is what came in. I planted a little bit of maybe two different types of seeds over there of grass. So that's why it has more of the big stuff. But so you come out here, and there is some big stuff. But there's a lot more variety. This little clump seems to be doing quite well. There's not a lot there to eat, but if there was more clumps, there would be. These things are nowhere near as lush as they were. Last year. We had a really good rain last year late and just things just popped. But it's still alive. That's the key. I'm not a hundred percent sure why this area is taking off the way it is. It might have multiple things going on. But this is probably that's only maybe three years old or something like that. This is, this is in the drought, and it's doing that good. I mean, this is a lot of grass that could be eaten by animals. So I've looked at chickens, I made a video about chickens, and it's basically like chickens to process chickens. Is like, you know. So I'm thinking, well, maybe what I ought to do is just do quail, because there's quail but not have any kind of intent to harvest them. Just build a big, mobile quail aviary, I think is the name for it, right? Just a big one. And move it every day and just let the quail breed in there and become more in it, you know, maybe once in a while, sell some or whatever, but the quail, would be massively beneficial to us. And I think I could probably do it without feeding them. Maybe in the winter time when it got really snowy or something like that. I think there's just enough food out here. Because there's quail already out here. If you give them enough space on the land, you know, supplement on the winter times. But then also, comparing cows, Sheeps and goats. Like I've been doing some research on those, and this whole time I kind of had a different understanding of goats. I thought they were a little more like tough and burly and stuff, but apparently they're not so freaking tough. Goats want to be eating like leaves off shrubs and stuff like that, right? So sheep would actually be probably the better animal and you could most stuff I could most definitely do like on my property I think I could do like a cow and like maybe two sheep or something like that move them every single day I have enough room here enough grass growing it would feed that much animals I think I'm kind of just 
guesstimating, I'm not sure. But the problem with this is there's all the things that go along with animal raising, right? That <laughs> is uh, a little much. Some things are just beyond my desire to, to deal with, right? Look at these prairie dogs. These things are just tearing up. That's a pretty nice thing of grass that will probably die off when the prairie dogs are doing their thing. Which they are definitely a huge problem when it comes to dead spots and freaking cheat grass loves to, it's like the only grass that really works on top of these prairie dog mounds. So eventually the prairie dog mounds will just turn into cheat grass, unfortunately. The time I've spent to get this property up to this level and the amount of time that I spend to keep it up and maintain it, and most of that time is doing this. So I'll pick up little scraps of wood, Find little areas like here. Take this, take this on like that, stomp it down, light it on fire, and just, you know, in whatever way the wind's blowing, you know, like you can just start like the wind's blowing that way today. So if I was gonna burn, I'd go over there to the edge of the property and find little clumps like this and just start burning them. Burn them, burn them, burn, and just work my way back this way. And that's what I do a lot of time doing it but as you can see this is probably done like maybe months ago so you can burn almost year round I mean if, if it hasn't been wet for like a week or so like you can burn this stuff I mean, some of it doesn't like to burn it's kind of a pain in the butt this is what I love to see this intermingling of grass and yarrow, like they're just feeding off one another. It's just like this synergistic thing. It's just like, this is what I want the entirety of this place to look like. No little vacant areas like there is in all over, like solid, right? Which at the, about that density is realistically sustainable. It's just about getting it back to that level. And you know, I've been burning this stuff, right? It's not easy. You can't just light it and expect it to burn. You have to pick up other stuff, put it in there, stomp on it, light it, and then you can go get you to burn. It'll get to burn. And it's not, it's, yeah, people are so worried about fire and there's, that is what you want to worry about in fire. That is what you want to worry about in fire. That stuff burns hot and you can't, I can just put out a grass fire with my flip flops. I can just stomp on it and it goes out. You got to have equipment to put out fires in that stuff. That is no joke fire. This is a grass fire. It's not the same thing at all. So by burning out all this, this is, this is the safest way you could possibly be. I mean, I have burned out here for years and years and years. And getting it to burn any more than that much at this point is almost impossible. Like, it just doesn't, you got to light it, you got to stomp on it, you got to poke it. I mean, it doesn't burn easy. Now, uh, July, August, September, October-ish, you know, those four months, you don't burn then, you get all your burning done before then, but it, yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll go then, but that's what you're avoiding, because if this goes, if this goes, if things start burning, it's, it, like I say, it's not nearly as big a deal as that stuff. The sage actually sends little particulate that's on fire uh whatever the hell they call that and and it'll fly and land that's not the same 
with the grass burning. Not even close. This stuff here, it, I mean, here, let me show you. All right, so this is my little thing I use here. You know, I come out here, I'm like, okay, there's a sage, I don't want the sage. Sage stump, right? Don't want that. It's a little, a little too hard to try to get it out. So I got these sage that are squished. I got that little thing, it's a woody. I don't know what it is. Okay, so I got all this wood here. I got this there. This is pretty stuck. Maybe some of this will come off. Probably not. No, it's pretty much stuck. This, again, is pretty much stuck. So I just get it with my foot, stomp it. Some of it comes off. pieces to light this on fire. I don't want to burn that out. This and this. Okay. That should go. Now, I got this chunk. I'm just going to light this. The wind's blowing not very good. I like the wind to actually be blowing to do this decently because then the fire burns. But if it was wind was blowing, I couldn't make a video. So that's the drawback. That's why I'm not going to do a bunch of burning today. Just a little bit to show. So, wind's blowing that way. I'm going to burn all this stuff here. I'm going to go in here. burned by just lighting it there but that doesn't actually happen that often. Let's see how it goes. actually change direction that's always nice that's what it does when there's no wind it blows all different ways some fires they're going right pretty hot burning wood I was hoping to burn out that one over there. It's kind of a weak fire. Turn up. <laughs> oh my.
long as the fire doesn't get too hot and it burns down into the ground, then the grass comes back. So, and it comes back green, greener than it went away. This one's actually spreading a little more than typical. The borderline where we should be burning, right on the edge. It is gonna rain a little bit in a couple days, but this is pretty much as late in the season as you wanna burn. June, July, August, September. You can burn in June if it rains a bunch in May, but that's not normal. So all these fires were all woodies, all juniper. And the grass is, you know, a bystander. But as you can see, the burning woody, sage, and the other stuff, it's quite substantial. And it's been burning for quite a while. Really hot, hot enough to burn things around it. This one might actually pick up and do some more. But right now it's not really, a little bit of wind would help. Comparison. I'm just gonna burn. There's no woodies here at all. I'm just gonna burn. Oh, actually, there is woodies in there. Uh, I'm gonna burn. I'm gonna burn that anyway. Because there's woodies there. The thing with it is, is the woody burns up, the grass burns up, and the grass comes. Was a little woody in there. But as you can see, the grass is almost out. The woody burned up pretty good. But the grass is no longer burning. But we go back over here to this, and it's all still burning. So you can see the difference between the grass fires and the woody fires is drastic. So, you don't worry about this. This is not what you worry about. You worry about that. That's what you worry about. And you get that out during the burn season when you don't have any possibility of things just going nuts. And then if something does happen in June, July, September, it's just a grass fire. It'll be like that. Maybe a little bit worse. Maybe. You know, it depends on where it starts and how far it burns before you catch it. But it's literally nothing to put it out. Where, as you can see, this is a huge difference of burning. Here, let's do one without a woody here. Okay, there's no woody there. There's a little wood on the ground, but...
All right, and done. And now we'll go back over here. Oh, oh, it's not just crap out of me. It's like I'm not done yet. Hanging on. I would have lit right there that would have that would have taken care of that but i'm not really trying to do a bunch of burning today i'm just burning for example so but now this is all good stuff you don't see this all over because i've done this before and it turns into beautiful green grass right so And as you can see, it, it, it spread a little bit, but, you know, not as much of it would is if I went over there in that pile, in that stand of, of sage, it would be a freaking nightmare. A little bit of wind in that sage, as dry as it is, I could lay all that shit on fire. It's already been knocked down and there's not a lot to it it's, it's a non-issue all right that's a video like subscribe peace thank you for watching my video